used to think that you, this was a disease purely of blood vessels, that there was changes in blood vessel size and that those blood vessels were pounding against the trigeminal nerve and this was what caused all the pain and migraine itself. And really since the, you know, before the 90s, maybe the 80s, they started to look at, okay, if it's a blood vessel disease, can we make medications that constrict blood vessels that can change and cause improvement in migraine? At that time, the first migraine preventive treatment had been approved and it was a beta blocker. So, you know, it kind of went along with this vascular. You change vascular system, you improve migraine. So it must only be blood vessels that are involved. And over time, with you know meticulous amount of work and numerous studies, they were able to start to key in certain places in the brain that were involved, the related nucleus of the thalamus, hypothalamus, um, all the other symptoms that don't get talked about too much, the you know changes in autonomic features. So patients with migraine can get congestion, running nose. That's why it's always called sinus issues. They get eye tearing. They can have a change in their temperature. People sometimes feel a little bit heated or flushed during migraine attack. And this is all because of changes in the hypothalamus. We know that patients with migraine can have light sensitivity. And this light sensitivity can last in between migraine attacks, which we call the intraictal time period. And this we have learned is coming from activation of the visual you know, sensory cortex and its relay into the thalamus. And so there's been a lot of discrete science that's identified this. When we thought it was just a vascular phenomenon and the blood vessels were beating against the trigeminal nerve, we started to learn more and more the trigeminal nerve played a big role and it was because of changes in its activation and all the chemicals that changed afterwards that caused problems during migraine attacks itself. We've learned a lot about the serotonin system and the real realization that there's a neurochemical basis of what's going on. We've learned about cortical spreading depression where you have this wave of electrical activity that comes across the brain that can cause abnormal signaling which causes different types of symptoms patients can have with aura like um, zigzag lines or flashing spotting lights or numbness or tingling down one side of their body and all of this layers. So what we don't know is what is the initial signal change that happens. We know there's blood vessel changes, we know there's trigeminal activation, we know all these areas in the brain are activated, there's cortical spreading depression and then they've gotten down to the blood vessels areas and said okay so these blood vessels are changing, is that the problem or is it actually the release of all these chemicals like CGRP, PACAP, um, they looked at substance P, they've looked at you know, neuroactive peptides, it's, they've looked at all the different chemicals and said which of these chemicals that are released when the blood vessels change, which one of these might be playing a role in migraine activation. And we've really gotten it down to CGRP and PACAP, these two different uh, neuropeptides that can play an active role in that start process of when a migraine happens. We've got still so much to learn. This is not one thing, it's so many things. And that explains why Every migraine looks and feels different um, from patient to patient, but also within a patient. They'll tell you, I have three types of headache. It's all migraine, but it's the one that starts on the right, the one that starts on the left, and the one that starts in the back, or the one that's one side goes to the left, the one that starts on the left, and then goes to the right. And they don't quite respond the same to treatments. So that's why I think they're different, but they're not different. They're migraine. They just are presenting themselves differently during attacks. And it's because what cycle got activated this time? Is it always the same or is it different things? And I think this kind of growth of realization that it's not so simple. It's not just a change in blood vessels. And if that's all it was, we would have probably fixed this problem a long time ago. But there's layer upon layer of complex things that happen in the brain that interact together to make this picture of migraine. So not just headache pain, the cognitive changes, fogginess, vision changes, uh, nausea, vomiting, light sound sensitivity, you know, the smell sensitivity, with, which patients talk about all the time but is not part of our diagnostic criteria, dizziness, vertigo, feeling off balance, irritability. I mean, it's, it's amazing the list of things that occur during a migraine because we have now activated this entire nervous system. Your body hurts, your back hurts. Sometimes patients would be like, I have a migraine in my stomach and my back hurts and then my right leg hurts. What is that about? And I'm like, well, you've activated the nervous system and your nerves are through your entire body and they play an important role in how you function day to day. So if you activate the most important part, of course, as a neurologist, I think the brain's the most important. If you activate this important part of your system, everything else starts to dysfunction. And it explains why patients have all these symptoms and when they hear this, they're like, oh, so I'm not crazy that everything hurts. It's not just my head and I feel miserable. 
And he said, no, your brain is active throwing this giant party and you're sitting here miserable and it's doing all this stuff. What did you think you were going to try to get through work? <laughs> Have a conversation with your friend? That's not going to happen because it's busy doing all this stuff. So we've had the you know, fortune of having these amazing scientists in our field who've really grown our field by leaps and bounds.